Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Eun Siu Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors of Riceville United Methodist Church. It is my great joy to welcome you to our worship service at the Vine, an online campus of Riceville United Methodist Church. We are so grateful to have this opportunity to worship together. No matter where you are joining us from, we cherish your presence with us today. So it is our prayer that through today's worship service, you will encounter God in a meaningful way and receive a blessing that touches your heart and life. So now let us open our hearts and minds to experience God's love and grace. Take a deep breath and feel closer to our Lord. Please join me in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be shown on your screen. Lord Jesus, Master of both the light and the darkness, send your Holy Spirit upon our preparations for Christmas. We who have so much to do and seek quiet space to hear your voice each day, we who are anxious over many things look forward to your coming among us. We who are blessed in so many ways long for the complete joy of your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy seek the joy of your presence. We are your people walking in darkness yet seeking the light. To you we say, Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hello, this reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verse 10. And the ransom of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Hello, I'm Pastor David Haley, one of the associate pastors here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, and I have the great privilege of leading us in our morning prayer. Now, as I'm praying, I'm going to pause in the prayer to give you the opportunity to lift up before God the names of persons that you would like to remember in prayer today. And you can do that by speaking those names out loud or speaking them in your hearts. Let us pray. Lord God, the storms of life are raging in this world and we need you to stand by us. The winds are trying to toss us to and fro and we need you to stand by us. We want to be prosperous like the tree planted by the streams of water that the psalmist talked about. We too want to yield fruit, but the challenges of daily living all too often hinder us. Some of us are so stressed that our leaves are starting to wither. God, we need you to order our steps and give us the strength to handle whatever we encounter on the pathway of life. Show us your grace and your favor, we pray. We're surrounded by strife and suffering. We pray for peace in the Ukraine and in Israel and Gaza. Help us to demonstrate your love through our daily lives to a world that desperately needs to see it. Be merciful, gracious God, to all those in trouble, those who are exhausted, those whose lives are ebbing away, those who are without friends, those who are forgotten by the world. We especially pray today for these whom we now name with our voices or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your promise to never forsake us or leave us. Help us to live lives through which you bless others. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. And as he taught and still teaches his disciples to pray, so now we also pray together as God's confident children the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to the time in our service where we take a few moments to reflect on our participation in the kingdom of God, especially through worshiping God with our giving. The scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 that each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful Giver. Because God gives us blessings each and every day, we worship God by giving offerings to God out of gratitude and thanksgiving. You can worship God with your giving at a live worship service by mailing checks to P.O. Box 748, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. You can also find a link on our church webpage through which you can give. And in so doing, you are worshiping God with your givings. It's time now for the children's message. And if you have children or youth nearby who aren't already watching this video, uh, now's a good time to call them over 
because I have something uh, pretty cool to share with them. Hey guys, I'm Pastor David, one of your associate pastors at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, and I get to share with you today the children's sermon. Now, of course, we all know what time of the year it is. It's Christmas time, and Christmas is coming very, very soon. Do you know what one of my favorite things to do at this time of year might be? What do you think? Eat Christmas cookies? Well, <laughs> yeah, that, and boy, last weekend, we had like 15,000 cookies at our cookie walk. I love to eat Christmas cookies, but that's, that's not the one that I'm thinking about today, not, not the favorite thing I'm thinking about. What else? Open presents? Well, now who doesn't like to open presents, okay? Well, I certainly do, but that's not the one I'm thinking about today. What else? Uh, decorate the Christmas tree? Well, that's always fun, but that's not the one either. Anybody else? Sing Christmas carols. Oh, I love to sing Christmas carols. But that's not the one that I'm thinking about. Do you know what one of my favorite things to do at Christmas time is? Let me just show you, huh? Wear ugly Christmas sweaters. Huh? I mean, have you ever seen one this ugly? I mean, look at this. It's even got bells on it and everything. Yeah, I know it may sound a little weird, but yeah, listen to me for just a moment. Let me explain why I love to wear an ugly Christmas sweater at Christmas time. You see, ugly Christmas sweaters are sort of like a tradition. It's one of those things that we love to hate. <laughs> um, and yet at the same time, I know that some of you are thinking, oh, I wish I had that sweater. <laughs> Well, I'm sure somebody somewhere is thinking that, right? Okay, okay. Um, but here's the thing. Ugly Christmas sweaters remind me of why Jesus was born in Bethlehem at Christmas time. Because you see, sometimes we're ugly. Now, I'm not talking about how we look. I'm talking about how we act and what we say. Sometimes we say mean, ugly things. Um, especially to our friends, or if you've got brother or sister. Sometimes we do mean things or ugly things. We disobey our parents. So, yeah, we're kind of ugly at times. And yet, God loves us anyway. In fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus came to save His people from their sins. And so when I think about ugly Christmas sweaters, it just reminds me that even though there have been times when I've said things I shouldn't or done things I shouldn't have, that because Jesus came that first Christmas, God loves me. And that proves God love, God's love for me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll remind us that there are times when we're not so different from an ugly Christmas sweater. We say mean things, we do things we shouldn't, but you love us, just like I love wearing my ugly Christmas sweater. And we thank you that Jesus was born that first Christmas so that we can have forgiveness for our ugliness, for our sins. Lord, we give you thanks for all the children and youth that are watching this video today and their families, and we pray your blessings on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my great joy and privilege to get to bring you our scripture passage today. Our scripture comes today from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. And we're picking up right where Pastor and Sue left off last week. Hear now this word. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, 
where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we are longing today to hear from you. Lord, I ask that in this time you might use me to speak a message to your people. Lord, I pray that anything I say that isn't from you would be instantly forgotten. But anything that I say that is from you, Lord, let it root deeply into our hearts. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The path is rocky under Mary's feet. She has at least one blister already, but she can feel another threatening to form where the leather of her sandal meets her heel. Every muscle in her legs are sore. She's been walking for four days now. Mary's parents looked at her like she was crazy when she asked out of the blue to travel to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth and her husband, Zachariah, lived in the hill country of Judea, nearly 90 miles away from Mary's family in Nazareth. The journey would take days, and the road was no place for a young woman to be alone. And where did this sudden desire to see her elderly cousin come from anyway? Mary made some remark about how she wanted to talk to Elizabeth about marriage in preparation for her own wedding to Joseph. She didn't tell them the full reason she needed to see Elizabeth, the reason that even now was growing inside of her. On that day when her whole life changed, Mary had been told by the angel Gabriel that Elizabeth was miraculously pregnant with the baby who we'll call John the Baptist. The angel gave her Elizabeth as living proof of what is possible with God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. Elizabeth's swollen belly would be the sacrament Mary needed an outward and visible sign of the inward and invisible grace at work in her life. That alone is reason enough for Mary to make the trip. But if she's being honest, there's another more ordinary reason. Mary needs the help of a woman who has been through this before. Mary is in her first trimester, and already she is experiencing the telltale symptoms. She needs to know what herbs to eat to help with the nausea. She needs to know how long the fatigue will last and what else she should be prepared for. 
And how long will it be before she starts to show? How long before this delicate secret between her and God is laid bare before the whole world? There are hundreds of reasons why Mary has made this journey to stay with Elizabeth. But the simplest is this. Mary is expecting. And expectation loves company. Elizabeth is expecting too. She is expecting a baby that she has been longing for for decades. Elizabeth was happily married to the priest Zachariah for years. But despite their love, their love for each other and their love for God, they were still without a child. After years of tears and seemingly unanswered prayers, Elizabeth accepted that she would never be a mother. She got used to the way that conversations would stop when she walked into a room. She made peace with the looks of pity on other women's faces and learned how to nod politely when they patted her on the arm and said, well, it just must not be God's will. This she could bear. But the knowledge that she couldn't preserve Zechariah's line into the next generation, that was almost too much for her to handle. Barren, that's what they called her. Unable to produce life, broken. But all of that changed six months ago when the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah while he was serving in the temple. He delivered an incredible message. Those prayers that Zechariah and Elizabeth had prayed for so long had not fallen on deaf ears. God was answering their prayers now with a son named John. And John would be given an important job to get people ready for the Messiah. Yes, the Messiah was coming. And Elizabeth's son would be the one to tell the world about it. It seemed too good to be true. But then the impossible happened. Elizabeth's belly began to grow round, and she felt her heart expand, too. Mary finally walks in, and at the sound of Mary's voice, Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit, and the baby leaps inside of her. Her wrinkled face lights up and a grin breaks out all across her face as she shouts out, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Relief floods Mary. She doesn't need to try to explain. She doesn't need to tell the story that she's been rehearsing for the past two days, trying to find the right words to sound credible. Elizabeth already knows. And even more than that, Elizabeth is thrilled. She isn't looking at Mary with pity or secondhand shame. Instead, she is shouting loud enough for the whole town to hear, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. In the exuberance of Elizabeth's excitement, Mary finally has the freedom to let her joy spill out. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He's brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He's filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He's come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The song Mary sings 
flows out of the Hebrew scriptures that she heard every day as a child. It borrows words and phrases from the Psalms that tell of God's power, of God's faithfulness to Israel, of God's care for the poor, of how God uses the humble to shame the powerful. Mary can sing from all of these scriptures because before Mary was expecting, the Israelites were expecting. Abraham was expecting. Abraham was just a no one when he was promised that he would become the father of a great nation and that through his family, God would save the world. David was expecting. Despite his failures as a king, God promised that his lineage would go on forever and that one day the very Messiah would be David's descendant. And after years of bad kings followed by worse kings, the Israelites were expecting this promised king from the line of David too. The prophets were expecting. They warned that if the Israelites didn't turn back from God, something terrible was coming. And yet in the midst of this, the prophets were expecting that God would be faithful. Well, now it had been 400 years since the last prophet. There have been generations who have lived and died without hearing a word from God, who have not seen God's promises fulfilled. And yet, there are some who have never stopped expecting. Now, here in this room, two peasant women become the embodiment of God's fulfilled promises. When they feel the kicks in their stomachs, they know that God's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. They know that the expectations are coming true. What are you expecting? Perhaps you feel like Elizabeth and Zechariah, that there's promises that have been made to you, dreams you have in your heart that have been lying dormant for years. Perhaps the way forward seems unimaginable. What are you expecting? Are there broken relationships in your life? Places where you cannot even imagine how something good and life-giving could come. What are you expecting? As you look at our world, the brokenness that seems to be everywhere, the pain and war, do you believe that there is a future filled with goodness and peace? What are you expecting? If the story of Mary and Elizabeth has anything to teach us, it's that there will always be a fulfillment of what God has promised. And though it may not come in the timing that we've imagined or in the forms that we have imagined, we who wait with bated breath for the word of God will never be disappointed. Blessed are we who believe that the Lord will fulfill his promises to us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you pray with me? Holy and loving God, keep us expectant. Help us to believe that there will be a fulfillment of the promises that you've made to us. We love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. As you go from this place, go expecting the promises of God to be realized even in your life. 
and as you go, may the spirit of the living God made known to us most fully in Jesus Christ our Lord go before you to show you the way, go behind you to push you into places you might not go on your own, go above you to watch over you and protect you, go beneath you to lift you up when you cannot stand, go beside you to be your companion and dwell within you to remind you every day that you are not alone and that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. Go in peace.